morning, everybody. Uh, we had a little bit of chance to talk last night about the light waiting, but uh, what I really wanted to emphasize before you even got in the cars today is, is where we're at and what we were trying to achieve with the car. Um, again, I, I spoke about it a little bit last night, but we knew going, in, going into this that this is a really difficult segment, right? A lot of competition. Um, it's, it's shrinking every year um, over the last three years, but with that said, it's still one of the largest volume market segments there is in the country for cars. So it's super important to us. And uh, we, we want to compete, we're going to compete, and our whole goal from day one was we were going to be segment leaders in this, in this segment. So um, when we were bubbling the car up, we did a lot of benchmarking, uh, we did a lot of surveying of our own customers, of people that don't buy our car and why they don't buy it. Um, and we get pulled all those attributes together and we focused on, on three major areas in the car that we felt was really important to this customer. Because like, you can't be everything to everybody or you don't you end up with a very good car. So you really need to know what the customer wants, what their expectations are. So we went after performance, which is a pretty broad spectrum, okay, so that covers a lot of areas. Uh, we went after ride comfort and seat comfort, because that was really important to the customer. And we went after quietness. Um, the car needed to be quiet. Because we were kind of the segment leader in that already, and we wanted to maintain that. So we would really push really hard to make sure that we just made another significant improvement in the area of quietness so that we maintained our leadership. So we didn't go into this saying we're gonna to stick to the status quo. We said we're gonna we're gonna make a significant improvement again in the quietness of the car from a, the way we designed our wipers and the money we put into our wiper system so it parked below the, the hood line, um, moving the mirrors off the off the mirror patch, putting them on the door so they're away from the air that's rushing around the A-pillar. So we got no wind noise on the A-pillar area. Um, just this, the overall shape of the car, the time, the amount of time we spent in the wind tunnel, making sure we had all that worked out, and then um, premium suspensions. So we have we have two suspension systems in the car. Basically, we got an 18-inch tire package um, that is kind of driven towards comfort. Um, we have a lot of customers that they want to get to point A to point B, and they want to be in the most quiet, comfortable car that we can make. All right, and we recognize that. So we've developed the car around, we got rid of the 19 inch tire this year and we went to an 18 inch and a 20 inch package. So the 20 inch tire package, we really want you guys to drive an 18 inch car and a 20 inch car today. So be very mindful of where you're at. We specifically designed the route and the ride and the, and the car selection, so there's six of each. So you can, you can pick a car with an 18 inch tire in the morning and drive a 20 inch tire on the way home and vice versa after lunch. So please try to make that happen because it is, it's significant, okay? So we have, we have a, an 18 inch car with a passive, um, passive dampers, McPherson strut front suspension, five link rear, and then the 20 inch cars come standard with CDC shock absorbers so they're, they're, they're variable damping, um, variable damping system and you get hyper strut in the front and the five link in the rear. So um, that those, those attributes we really want to make sure you guys capture. Now, um, from a road noise perspective, these are the, you're going to go through a uh, section of roads here in Portland that are probably the worst in the country. Um, they're probably comparable. I, like I drove some roads in Atlanta earlier this year, and I drove some roads in, in uh, the, the western part of New York that are similar, but I don't think there's anything worse than it is here. Um, and we, we have a, a, a road noise facility at the Milford Proving Grounds where we can do smooth road uh, noise evaluations and coarse road noise evaluations. And our coarse road uh, facility at Milford pretty much matches these roads. Uh, we did that on purpose, obviously. We're trying to find the worst roads so we know what our uh, customers are going to be driving. So we gotta, I want to run through this little video we did to kind of give you an example of, of where we're at and what we tried to achieve and why we wanted to be segment leading and where we went with that because uh, the largest seller in this segment before we come in with this new car was a Lexus 350. My expectations are we're going to pass them, we're going to just leapfrog them because this car is far more superior in my mind to that. Um, like again, we designed it to be segment leading. I think from all the data and all the work we did, we are going to be the segment leader. And um, with that, I want to just kind of run through this video if it's okay. <coughs> We've taken the library quiet theme and tried to incorporate that into the daily use of the vehicle. 
the three ways to keep noise out of the car was to reduce the noise at the source, two, to block the noise from getting into the vehicle, and the last pillar is really to absorb the noise that does get in. We actually have two instrumentation grade microphones. We place one by the driver's ear, right position, and we have one in the rear seat. So we don't only look at the environment that the driver has, but we also are concerned about the rear seat and the passenger compartment as well. In addition to the microphones, we have high resolution data acquisition equipment that allows us to analyze the data. We have two main road surfaces. So one is a coarse road, which brings out some of the, what we call low frequency booming type noise. The second is a smooth road, which really gets it around our airborne noise and wind noise attributes of the vehicle. And what it does is it gives us a consistent surface that we can measure back to back. And when we make changes to the car, we know that we've moved the needle in the correct direction. But we've also taken a look at the competition, trying to be a step ahead of them in terms of overall quietness of the vehicle. We've taken the 2017 Buick LaCrosse and improved on it, even to make it more serene, more refined, and built on the reputation that we've established with the overall Buick brand. So it just kind of reinforces how, how we go about doing it. So it's not a subjective evaluation or it's not like we drive it and say we think it's better. We're actually <coughs> measuring it in a very high tech way to know that we are segment leading in this area. So really proud of that. Um, I, I think you're going to see it, but I will tell you if you're not from this area, beware when you first get on the roads. It's, it's really, really loud. These roads are like the worst in the country, I think. But you're going to get out in a section of the road probably about 40 minutes, Todd, 30 minutes, 40 minutes out, you get into some really nice roads and you can really understand where we're at from a library quality, uh, quality standpoint. Now, you saw in the video, you know, you design the noise not to get in, you try to block it, and then you try to absorb it. From a not letting the noise get in, um, we put the, the, what I consider, I'm an old chassis guy, um, the most premium suspension you can put on a car for a rear suspension is a five link, in my opinion. You'll get some arguments, well, there's H-Arm and other things, but we've had some experience in the car with an H-Arm. That's what we had in the last model. We have a ton more experience now um, with five links. We've generated some really good computer models and understand how to tune a five link suspension um, to give you all the attributes you want from both a ride and a handling perspective. So when you think about a five link rear suspension, that gives uh, Todd and his development team the opportunity to tune 10 different bushings in that suspension so you can really optimize it for both ride and handling. And when you, when you experience a vehicle, um, most people don't understand how important a rear suspension is because you're driving the car and the front of the car is obviously very important too, but you can always correct. If the car doesn't do what you want it to do, you can take the steering wheel and you can adjust it to get the car to do what you want to do. The rear suspension is going to do what it's going to do and you're not going to correct it. So if you can get the rear suspension to give you that optimal performance in cornering, handling, and ride, that really improves the overall attributes of the car. So the five-link rear suspension for us was a big win. It was uh, you know, a significant cost increase to the car, but it was the right thing to do. Um, so th that you'll experience that through the day. The other thing um, we did, and I'll talk more at lunch, but I want to go over it this morning just so everybody's aware. We put an electronic shifter in the car uh, we did this for ergonomics and for packaging reasons. It wasn't a decision just to go, way, hey, this is cool, way cool technology. This really gives us an opportunity to take a shifter mechanism that's typically about this big. Um, that's the housing under the car that you guys never see that's buried into the console and bring it down to about 125 millimeter cube. So this enabled, enabled us to be able to place the, uh, the shifter in the most ergonomically correct location for most customers and it also freed up all the space underneath for storage. So if you have an, a, a tablet, uh, women, if you have a small purse, you can put it underneath there. There's a power outlet under there. So it's just, what's one of the things the customers told us about our last car is like, we need more storage. So we've improved the storage capability of the car. Uh, all the doors, we've really paid a lot of attention on how we design the doors. So you can actually put bottles in there and you can put a lot of small things in there, CDs or whatever. Really large glove box, really large console. So storage is much improved. Same with the trunk space. Uh, we had a fairly large trunk in the last car, but this, we, we didn't do a really good job, to be honest with you, on how we designed the rear of the car around the opening. And we spent a lot of time making sure we got the opening right now so that you can, it's really usable space. So when you open the trunk, you'll notice it's significantly larger in appearance and usability. So 
those are a few things. But the, back to the electronic shifter. Um, <clears throat> to shift the car, there's a button on the side of the shifter. Um, like, like most cars, all the cars today, you have to have your foot on the brake to get it out of park. You press the button over and down for drive, over and up for reverse. Okay, and then to park it, you just push the button right on top of the shifter. So take your time when you're starting out. It's a, it's a little different. Um, I'm also the chief on the, the XTS, so I drive them back and forth a lot. And I can tell you, it, you'll get really used to it. You drive it for a couple days, and it's just totally normal. It's, it seems super normal, but at first, it's a it feels a little awkward because you're not used to it. You've been shifting cars one way for your whole life, and now this is a little different. So take your time from a safety perspective, and make sure you got it in gear. Look down and. Just kind of go through the safety side of the business. Mm -hmm.